Good evening and warm welcome to you all for the Total Smart Talk series lecture 9 an insight to design and construction of reinforced soil walls by Mr. Saurabh Vyas, Head Technical Services, TechFab India and Engineer Premlal Shah, Senior Manager Designs, TechFab India. This is the ninth talk series organized by Turtle Smart Solutions as part of our initiatives to provide a knowledge sharing platform among engineers and academicians through interactions with eminent technocrats from academics and industry. We cordially welcome all enthusiasts to the session in the series organized in coordination with Association of Engineers Kerala, Tiruvanthapuram District Committee, Indian Concrete Institute, Tiruvanthapuram District Center, and Hypetech Total Solution Providers about a relevant topic, design and construction of reinforced soil walls by industry experts, Mr. Saurabh Vyas and engineer Premlal Shah of TechFab India Industries Limited. TechFab India Industries Limited is a manufacturer of geosynthetic products with their manufacturing facilities located in Sil Silvasa Daman and Haridwar. The company provides BIS certified geosynthetic products and services to enable owners, consultants and contractors to design and implement reliable, economic and easy to construct uh, solutions for a wide range of geo geotechnical, transportation, hydraulic and uh, environmental related problems. The presentation will follow panel discussion among industry experts and academicians. Dr. K. Valen, Dr. Jaya V, Dr. Asha M. Nair, Professor G. V. Ramna, and uh, Engineer Anwarzi. So please stay tuned till the end. Now, Jose H. Johns, Assistant Executive Engineer, LID, and EW, to deliver a few words about AOEK. Association of Engineers Kerala, I thank you all. Association of Engineers Kerala is a non-profit organization of about 4,000 and more engineers from Public Works Department, Irrigation Department, and Local Self de Department from Government of Kerala. Every year, we conduct technical sessions to update our engineers about new technologies and also we conduct annual sports and cultural meet for the serving and retired engineers and their family members. The association on engineering problems we are facing and we publish periodicals and journals containing articles by engineers regarding technical and non-technical subjects. We also gave support to the government for technical support or also uh, give solutions things for the government a uh, lot of uh, technical support to the government and also we provide uh, low uh, low cost housing for the uh, inmates who lost their house during flood this is our 10th uh, sorry, this is our ninth technical session of this year. On behalf of Trivandrum District Committee, I congratulate the organizers for con conducting this event. I also express our gratitude on behalf of Association of Engineers Kerala to the speakers from TechFab India for taking their precious time to share valuable knowledge and experience with our engineers. Thank you. Thank you, Joseph. Now I request engineer Anwar Hussein, chairman, ICI, Tiruvanthapuram Center and director, Hypetech, to deliver a few words about ICI and Hypetech. Thank you. Am I audible? Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Indian, Indian Concrete Institute is one of the leading professional bodies in India catering to the professional needs of individuals and organizations involved in concrete. Being a non-profit organization, it is dedicated to the cause of disseminating knowledge to, on concrete, to promote, to promote concrete technology and construction, and to address the research needs of concrete. The ICI was formed in the year 1982 with around 500 members, 
from five regional centers. Now the membership has risen to nearly 15,000 enrolled members from 46 regional centers in all major cities spread across the end of length and breadth of the country. Of these, more than 363 are organization members. The 46th regional center was inaugurated earlier this year in Srinagar, and the 47th will be inaugurated soon. And regarding Hypetech, it is uh, one of its kind company in Trivandrum, providing all kinds of solutions for structural rehabilitation and structural retrofitting. We have with us technically sound supervisors and laborers for doing any type of structural strengthening work. We are also doing foundation strengthening work using nanochemicals, polymers, and cement in proportion solely device players for various conditions. Thank you. Thank you, Anwar, sir. Now I request engineer Smitha S. Nair, assistant executive engineer, Kerala PWD, to formally introduce and invite our guest speaker. Thank you. Good evening, all. Today we have two eminent industry experts from Texas for delivering the session. Mr. Saurabh Vyas, head of technical services, and Mr. Premlal Shah, senior manager of designs, both from Texas, India. Mr. Saurabh Vyas is an expert in the design of geosynthetic related application and reinforced soil structures. He has a combined experience of more than 24 years, out of which more than 20 years is in geosynthetic industry, and has been actively associated with the geosynthetic industry since 2002-2004 in India. He has worked with several organizations in different areas like development of product applications, design and implementation of uh, solutions using geosynthetics. He has experience in the uh, diverse areas of geosynthetics such as reinforced soil walls and slopes, ground improvement, slope stabilization, subgrade and railway track but track but stabilization, landfill, coastal, coastal protection works, etc. Also, his experience includes the successful implementation for design and construction of reinforced soil structures using different types of polymeric reinforcement with wide ranges of spacings. He has been actively involved in the participation of seminars, conferences organized by IGS, IRC, CBIP, and IITs. He has also given his contribution for the committee such as WRD25 and currently working with committees for various standard formulations like TX30, TX33, uh, BIS, and uh, H4IRC. Now, Mr. Premlal Shah, a senior manager of designs, um, he is graduated in civil engineering from BVM Engineering College, Sardar Patel University in 2003. He earned his master's in geotechnical engineering from the Maharaja Sayaj Rao University of Baroda in 2008. He has gained professional experience for more than 15 years in the field of uh, civil engineering. He has been working as designer engineer for many geosynthetic applications such as Gabion retaining walls, reinforced soil walls, prefabricated vertical drains, etc. With uh, this, uh, I may invite Mr. Saurabh Vyas and Mr. Premlal Shah to deliver the session. Thank you. Thank you very much, ma'am. So, first of all, uh, we are very much thankful for Petal Smart Solution LLP, Association of Engineers Kerala Chapter, then Indian Concrete Institute, and uh, Hiptech Builders, Total Solution Provider, for giving us an opportunity to present our company and uh, to discuss the geosynthetic solutions and the products. And I'm also very much thankful to all the participants who has just taken uh, time for uh, this uh, particular schedule and they are uh, being present here. So I will just start my presentation. I will do share the screen. I think screen is visible. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. So today's our uh, discussion uh, is uh, for uh, facing options for reinforced soil systems and its design aspects. So we have been prepared this presentation considering the requirement and the suggestions given by the peoples 
PWDs and all the engineers and my colleague also. So here uh, with me, uh, Premal, uh, my uh, colleague from technical department is present. My another colleague, Mr. Anwar Mohamad, is also present. He is looking after the local businesses in Kerala. And uh, for this uh, presentations and for this uh, making these things happen, I think Mr. Anwar has taken a pain and meet all the people and uh, he make this possible. And I think uh, the response is also very good. So we are thankful for that. So our presentations today is for reinforced soil system. So we have considered here uh, all the things which has been covered under the name reinforced soil system. So in this category, we have covered reinforced soil wall and slope, both the things. So the contents of the presentations is the one simple comparisons because one should know that what is the reinforced soil wall against the conventional retaining structure. Then the reinforcement being used for the reinforced soil wall systems. There are very various facings options are there. So that options and uh, here considering the suggestions we have been uh, taken into considerations all uh, other type of facings other than the reinforced soil concrete like KBNs and soft facings options and like this. So that we are discussing in detail. Then advantages of the reinforced soil wall. Then obviously the design considerations because there are various codes and standards available and to uh, which standard is follow for the which kind of applications that can be just given clarity through these presentations and the design methodology. We have also covered the brief design methodology and some case studies considering the time uh, permits will go in detail with the uh, case studies. We have covered some five case studies in this. So now we'll go with this conventional lettering wall versus reinforced soil wall first aspects. So if you can see here, so there are two sketches there. One is conventional wall that we can call it reinforced cement concrete wall, RCC wall. And second is the reinforced soil wall. So if the first comparison and first difference in both kind of system is that this is externally stabilized wall and this is internally stabilized wall. How? So whatever the earth pressure comes from this backside of the backfill, it has to be taken care by this mass of the gravity wall or you can say the concrete wall. So this is externally we are providing the mass to just taken care of the earth pressure of the backfill soil. Here what we are doing? If you can see the fascia is the very thin fascia, but we are providing the reinforcement behind. This reinforcement we can call is it is internally stabilized the mass. So because it is internally stabilizing the mass, the earth pressures here is the minimal or I, we can say is a almost zero. So just as a fascia, we have to provide different kind of facings to take care of the revealing and erosion of this particular facing. So this is the internally stabilized wall. This is the externally stabilized wall. External stability for both kind of systems are similar. But here, because we are internally stabilizing the wall, one more checks for the internal stabilization that has to be uh, taken care of in designing while we do the design for the reinforced soil wall. So this is the major difference between these two systems. Now, this is a typical cross sections. I think everybody aware of these sections of the reinforced soil wall where we can have a facings. Facings have a, so many options. Okay, we have shown here is the concrete fascia, but there are other kind of facings also. When we go with the, our presentations, we can come across all different kind of fascias. This is the reinforcement. Any kind of reinforcement material can be used, but with the defined parameters and accredited product and established one after the testing at laboratories, one can use the particular kind of reinforcement. Then another is the drainage arrangement. This is the drainage bay behind us. There is a pipe also. And at the certain places, some non one geotextiles to just prevent the erosion of the soils are to be provided. This is the leveling pad. Sometimes there is a myth also. Okay, everybody thinks that all the load is transferred through leveling pad. No. This leveling pad is only to level the surface to place this fascia. 
but load is transferring with this entire mass this entire mass is transferring the load so in rcc wall we are just considering the footing here the footing for this is the entire length of the reinforcement and this reinforced fill, retained fill, and foundation fill. All these kind three fill materials are very much crucial while designing the any kind of reinforced soil structures. This is a crash barrier and friction slab. Once we complete this, we can have this covered with this crash barrier kind of things. So as per the requirement, it can be done. So majorly, these all are the components of the reinforced soil structures. We'll go one by one in detail. Now this is a slope. We have seen the wall. Now the slope. Slope means the angle is less than 70 degree. So whenever the batter, we can if you can see the batter, batter is 20 degree. If for more than 20 degree, it called as a slope. So there are various systems as a fascia. We can have the uh, with the reinforced soil slope also. We can have a green fascia with the vegetations. We can have a weld mass. We can have a gabions, so many other kind of fascia you can use with that. And whenever you have a cutting is involved in any kind of slope, then you have to take care of the rain, uh, drainage aspects very well. So we can call it is a chimney drain. This chimney drain can be provided to just take care of any of the, the water has to be penetrated during rainy season and it has to be drained out effectively. In these also some leveling pad kind of things is required and the reinforcement as per designing one has to provide the same way the soil parameters has to be defined while designing and foundation also so these all are the component what i have just shown you in the slide geotextile for erosion prevention for drainage consideration there is a drainage bay there is another product which can replace the drainage bed. We can call it is a drainage composite. This is also a design product, means all the uh, in plane flow, then what all are the other factors to be considered by placing this. So we can have the calculation for the long term flow also. That analysis has to be carried out by applying this drainage composite when we are replacing with the drainage bed. Then the backfill material, then reinforcement what facings we are considering. Facings also involves connection and all these things. Then coping beam and leveling pad. So these are the all components of the reinforced soil structures. Now first, reinforced fill backfill material. So there are certain standards and there are gradations given in certain standards. Which kind of material to be used for reinforced fill applications and for the backfill as a reinforced fill and as a retained fill. So generally we are adapting as per the more specification is available and as per the IRC because for all the infrastructure projects in India, either we have to follow the IRC or more specifications. So based on that, this is the parameters. So in this case, gradation has been given, but the crucial is the PI plasticity index is less than six. 75 micron means we can call a fines silt and clay the percentage is should be less than 15 percent and the whatever the material we are using as a reinforced fill it has the friction angle not less than 30 degree so 30 or more than that we need to consider if instead of soil we want to use another kind of material like pond as then it has to be con uh, confirming to ircsp 58 standard so standard is allowing pondes as a reinforced fill and as a retained fill also so we can use it but we should see the parameters are matched with the given specification as per ircsp 58 also this thing because pondes we know pi is zero it's a non-plastic material but other things we have to taken care of also this gradation will not match but definitely the phi value we have to just match more than 30 degree and it, it uh, generally we are getting more than 30 degree for pondes. So there are so many pro projects has been completed with this kind of material also. Now this is the very crucial material because the internally stabilized structures are more depend on the fill material because the friction are based 
on the which kind of material you are using as a backfill. So you should check periodically the parameters of this while using. So the frequency has to be considered for different tests to be done at site for this kind of material. So this is the very crucial thing, so reinforced fill, backfill material for reinforced soil structures. Second, geotextile. So these geotextile are used as a filter material for filtration considerations. So non-woven needle punch or thermally bonded geotextiles are being used. And uh, geotextiles are both polyester or polypropylene, both kind of things. And uh, as per there are given uh, specifications in more than type 1, type 2, type 3, 700 section. So accordingly, one can consider the type 2 geotextiles and it will around 200 GSM of the materials are being used as a non one Preferably polypropylene is uh, more durable than polyester. Polyester, some people are also using because standards are allowing both kind of things. But for the longer lifespan, durability is concerns, polypropylene geotextiles are very much uh, proposed everywhere. Then this is the drainage composite. So we have just seen that okay, there are uh, provisions to be given for drainage in the reinforced soil structures because if the water has uh, not drained out properly, definitely it will create a pore water pressures behind the wall. And uh, once the pore water pressures is created, then it is very difficult because so many issues started in reinforced soil structure because the fascia is very thin. It can't take the pore water pressure. So we should release this. And either a 600 mm thick uh, aggregate drainage bay has to be provided or this drainage composite. It's a design material. So it has a geotextile both the side and in between there is a net is provided. And we have to provide the entire fascia, backside of the fascia, this particular product as a replacement of the drainage bay. There are uh, testing, certain tests to be provided for this product to define the long-term flow. Because we know that when we do the testing uh, for this product, we can get the short-term flow. Means while testing, I, I can get certain flow value. But if I have to consider for 100 years lifespan, definitely I should consider so many things like compression creep, then installation damage of this product, all durability aspects. And then I have to reduce those things by considering long-term factor. So my flow has to be reduced and that reduced flow has to satisfy this drainage bay requirement. So this is the purpose for this drainage composite. So all the materials we have uh, just discussed, common materials for reinforced soil walls. Now, now next our contents is the type of uh, reinforcement are being used in reinforced soil wall. So here you can see the some uh, photographs, uh, all uh, different kind of products, but all are polymeric reinforcement we have shown. There are other uh, things, uh, other steel reinforcements are also being used, but because of the price consideration and all these things, nowadays all uh, geosynthetic materials are only used for uh, reinforced soil applications. So first, geogrids. So you can see this is the geogrids. This is the uni XL geogrid, means one direction tensile strength is higher than the another directions. And the requirement for reinforced soil wall is the tensile strength in one direction uh, is required more than the cross direction. And we can call it uni XL geogrids. There's another kind of uni XL geogrid. Then this is the, we can call it is a tech link or geolink. It has been also used, but uh, whenever the requirement is for high tensile, very much high tensile strength for the high reinforced soil slope or uh, higher walls, like uh, 30 meter, 40 meter, then only this kind of uh, product has been used because this geogrid is uh, up to, you can get 450 kilonewton per meter tensile strength, but this link is available up to 1300, 1400 kilonewton per meter of tensile strength. It's very high strength material. Then this geogrids is replaced with the another kind of product. This is a strap, or we can, uh, you can also call it strips. 
it's a 95 mm wider strap only and it has been used with the same material we, raw materials are remain same polyester high tenacity polyester yarns are being used in this also geogrid also and in strap also and in this also particular uh, product so all these products are with the high tenacity polyester yarn and these straps are also being used as a reinforcement for reinforced solid structures so this is the different kind of uh, products are being used as a reinforcement for reinforced soil wall and also for the reinforced soil slope so basically polymers uh, are uh, being used as a polyester with a viscoelastic uh, materials and uh, for this reinforcement one has to consider the different parameters because it has to also perform their intended uh, um, application purpose for uh, 100 years or 120 years of lifespan it has to perform and for that there are certain tests has to be carried out and uh, whenever we are using that we have to check the pull out resistance means how the bond between the soil and the particular reinforcement we are getting what is the encouragement and all these things has to be taken care now the facings so different kind of fascia one can use uh, because uh, sometimes uh, people are come with us with the available fascia options with them and we have to design with that so we need to check all the things uh, for the consideration of the facings compatibility between the fascia and the reinforcement connections and everything while we selecting the fascia so this is the table if uh, one can uh, just have an idea of which different kind of uh, fascia are used with which kind of reinforcement so these are modular concrete blocks block size 450 mm wider 200 mm thick and 300 mm tab, uh, for the block size geogrids are being used with that then uh, concrete panels panels are also different size either 1.5 by 1.5 meter then 1.6 by 1.8 meter so there are different size of concrete panels you can use geogrid also and you can have the t panel square panel plus panel geogrid and strap both kind of reinforcement when you are using gabion as a fascia you can have a geogrid and strap both welded wire mesh also you can use this wrap around because a hundred percent coverage you have to use geogrid with geocell as a fascia you can have this geogrid only so there are only i have just tabulated seven different kind of choices but there are another further choices are there which can be used with the geogrid or a strap kind of product as a reinforced soil wall and the slope and what fascia facing has to perform a role their role is to be as a framework because as we have seen we have to do the compaction behind we have to lay the reinforcement and lay the soil in layer wise do the compactions so for uh, during the compactions it will act as a framework then it will stabilize the particular fill material nearby the fascia so prevent erosion also protection of the reinforcement because this is a polymer kind of reinforcement when it is exposed under the uh, climate then definitely because of the temperatures it may deteriorate or it may have some issues so it will protect that also for the connection when we are uh, connecting the reinforcement with the fascia we need some anchors so tie back connections and definitely aesthetic is there because if in wrap around when we do the wrap around of the wall we don't have the fascia aesthetically present unless until we do the vegetations above that but in the panel in the block any kind of things we can make and we can have a, a pleasant uh, appearance uh, after completing the wall also when we select the fascia we should know that compatibility between these two then construction method which we are adapting sometimes the panel also move, moved because if the soil is weak if we are allowing any settlement and uh, uh, considerations are there while designing so we have to select the fascia which will allow the movements whenever the very steep curves are there to accommodate this type of curves we have to have the some small kind of fascia so that can be also possible in this and uh, vertical profile if anything we have to accommodate 
and finally cost economics has to be con considered while deciding this now different kind of fascia but i am not considering the concrete fascia right now because uh, uh, we have to be just uh, asked to consider the other fascia other than the this this concrete fascia so we are considering the different kind of other fascia so in these gabion also there are two type of uh, connection systems so in gabion fascia either you can put simply the reinforcement in between two gabion box and it called a friction connection but in why we have selected this ours is the positive connection you can see this is the rod here and the reinforcement is coming passing through this rod and another one meter of overlapping is there so it become a positive connection so this positive connection has an advantage okay, when you do the test and whatever the connection capacity you derive that uh, connection capacity you will get at site and this is there are the test certificates for this because unless until you do the testing you cannot apply those things at site so we have a test certificates from iits for connection capacity and this is the reinforcement as per the design we are providing from bottom to top this is a non woven geotextile behind so that soil will not come outside and this is a gabion box filled with the boulders from bottom to top so this this is also one kind of systems which one can go with the gabion fascia and it will allow uh, movements because it's a very flexible structures the batter is minimum 6 degree batter you have to provide accordingly the offset for each and every layer of the gabion boxes are to be given so this is the 3d view you can see the gabion box you have to provide the geo grid then wrap and coming again like this it will come so metal gabions are there in gabion also there are different kind of gabion products are available like only zinc coated uh, mesh is available you have zinc and pvc coated products are available you have a zinc plus 10% aluminum when the uh, corrosion prone area or nearby seas or you are executing any structure then definitely the 10% aluminum will just uh, give, you, give you that uh, more dura durable and more life span so different kind of uh, material is available and in that case you can consider Uh, particular product as per the application and as per the requirement at site this is a strap so similarly with gabions with the rod you have a strap of the strap reinforcement and you can execute the wall with this only the reinforcement has been changed and the design is carried out as per the report of the connection capacity there is a completed wall photographs another is the welded wire mesh instead of gabions you have a welded mesh like this and geogrid is coming wrapping and coming up and you have any kind of wire mat or something at top some vegetative soil with uh, any kind of filter material also behind so you can have the vegetations after certain period of time if you uh, fill this area with the boulders then there won't be any vegetations if you want to have a vegetations you have a certain area with the vegetative soil and you can have a vegetation this is the view of this particular product and the welded wire mesh this is a completed wall 15 meter high wall with the same application this is a dnd flower in delhi if you don't want any hard fascia you can have the wrap around fascia with the gabion uh, with the bags also in this case you can have some more better angle but you can build a slope like this so with this kind of uh, bags then reinforcement wrap like this here also if you feel certain uh, portion of this particular bags with the uh, manure kind of soil you can have vegetations so this is also one kind of fascia one can consider sorry this is the one wall we have executed temporary wall uh, because the one carriage where they have to uh, execute first and then uh, another carriage where has to be start after diverting traffic on this wall so this is the temporary wall for 3 years they have asked us to design and then we have given this and they did this 
you can have a geo cell also as a fascia and this geo cell front uh, cell you can have this vegetation and the reinforcement is like this so this is also one kind of uh, systems where geo cell being used as a fascia now next is the advantage of rs1 <coughs> Now, I think we should know that because it's a more flexible wall that uh, than uh, compared to the reinforced soil structures. So if you can uh, see the all the parameters requirement like a reinforced soil wall and the reinforced concrete uh, structures, the settlement consideration here is 25 mm, then here is the uh, reinforced soil wall is 100 mm. And uh, uh, because of the more flexible structures, you can uh, also uh, just see the if any variation in the soils it can be accommodated very well another thing uh, because of the scarcity of the another uh, different kind of aggregate and all these things you can consider this with the uh, limited use of aggregate and uh, this you can also uh, use this drainage composite instead of uh, drainage bay so in this the case there are so many options are available with reinforced soil structures so um, commercially also if you can see the saving in the cost is uh, starting from the 10 percent to 35 percent on a higher heights so if you can see this uh, reinforced uh, soil wall is being executed each and every projects right now if any infrastructure project is there in india you have a uh, 50,000 to 1 lakh square meter of reinforced soil wall. Right now, we are involved with the more than 20 projects across India for reinforced soil wall, for NHAI and PWDs and for other uh, agencies. Now we will go with the design course standards and tools. So in India, there are uh, certain standards available, but the basic standards which all uh, over uh, globe people are adapting and using for designing reinforced soil structure is this two. One is British standards, this is uh, 8006-2010, and one is FAWA, is ASCO based standard. These two standards are widely used globally for designing reinforced soil structures. And our code or our standards are also ask us to follow these two. And based on this only, everybody is designing in India. Our available standards, if you can go with IRCSP 102 is there. That is for the reinforced soil structure, but guidelines, not the detailed designing is there. And another is IRCSP 1162018. Right now only in our H4 committee, because I am a part of that H4 committee in IRC. So we are revising this IRCSP 102. Also in BIS, we have developed the one uh, COP code of practice and that is for reinforced soil structures and within two three months might be that uh, standard will publish then one uh, one can have the detailed design standard available in India this is for Gabians uh, IS standards 16014 for designing any kind of things for Gabians in India, because we have to follow two different standards, BS and also ASTO, there is no software available in market. So designer has to make their own seat, design spreadsheet for RS1. We have also developed our own seat and uh, we are also designing with this spreadsheet. But for ASTO designs means for FAWA analysis you can consider mscw or mscw plus mscw3 is absolute now only mscw plus is available for slope you have a resa plus resa plus is available so with these two standards you can have the external stability overall global stability internal stability checks everything with various facing options are available like panel block gabion wrap around everything is available so you can do the designs for this so this is the widely used everywhere if in, if you can go usa because we are giving our product and solution in usa market also people are following this they have their another uh, softwares also but widely they are using these two standards and definitely for preparation of the drawings you need the autocad cadmet cadmet is also uh, same version of autocad but uh, one can use this uh, perpetual license is available with for this now we'll go with for the design methodology 
so as i have told you in the initial uh, slides itself okay, because we have to do the external stability similar manner like we are doing for the reinforced soil structure reinforced uh, concrete structures so that external stability is similar once we define the geometry and the parameters then internal stability because we are stabilizing the mass with reinforcement inside we need we need to check the internal stability so we have to do the both the checks for any kind of designs and in for any height we are carried out for reinforced soil structures so to de defining the geometry one should know what is the wall height what is the better to be provided what is the surcharge load different loading live load dead load then seismic considerations also the properties of the reinforced fill what is the unit weight of soil what is the frictional angle of the soil what is the retained fill material i am going to use same as reinforced fill or any other kind of thing what is the foundation fill what is the concentration parameter what is the c5 value liquid limit plus C limit everything we should know spts at various depth and ground water conditions so unless until i have this data i cannot start my design consideration my analysis for that so first i have to gather the data for this there are softwares where you can see here all the methods are given here when we do the analysis on the software this is mscw software screenshot you have asto method 98 2002 this is a ncma is a national concrete masonry association of america usa so for any private projects they are doing with this ncma standard that's why ncma has been given then ASTO 207 2010 this is the latest one lrfd is based on faw only so they have given this also and this is 2017 2020 so one more method they have added and that is if you want to do this this is a simplified stiffness method but it is very difficult nowadays nobody is using this because at very initial stage and in this case they have uh, just ignored so many things so in usa it has just come this stiffness method but generally this all these things we are using then the geometry also simple complex means wall above another and all these things you have a different kind of reinforcement options you have a different kind of fascia options like wrap around full height segmented modular blocks and you do the analysis then one by one you go inside and you fill up the data and then you run the files and you can have output so this is the software now what the different standards uh, are uh, given some considerations for minimum length and then embedment and all the all other things so certain major things we are just briefly explaining here so if you can uh, go with the conservative standard of BIS, uh, BS, British standards, they have given the minimum requirement of the reinforcement length is a 0.7 H or 3 meter minimum. If you have a abutment, bridge abutment, then 0.6 time H plus 2 meter or 7 meter minimum. And also the for the different kind of uh, design methodology, they have given the different uh, length of the reinforcement. If you have a stabbed walls, then 0.7 at top half, half of the structures then uh, for wall subject to low thrust from retained fill such as negative back slope or embedment walls then 0.6 h low height walls when the height is very minimal then uh, one can just see for that uh, any leverage will be there if you can consider the embedment depth so definitely uh, as per the bis they have given uh, for wall h by 10 h is the height of the wall abutment h, h by 10 walls h by 20 and for the beta considerations what is the slope at toe based on that also it has been varying so one has to consider the minimum one meter of after one meter the whatever the uh, depth the minimum embedment depth you are going to consider has to be achieved at site because in these conditions uh, one has to check when the slope at toe is available for the foundation of any of the structure. Here also similar case, properties are considered different, different properties are there. One has to consider when the sloping surcharge is there, your slope above the wall, slope below the wall means at a toe level, so, and then consider the development depth, eccentricity, 
and soil types different so all these things are there in uh, designing all the considerations one has to do there are equations that uh, gives you the all the values and once you put these values then you can have the output these are how to apply the load for the strip load different kind of because you have a crash bearer here w beam crash bearer here so how to model those things it has been given here type of soils and parameters how to input it has been given like this as per bs when you are designing there are three load combination load combination a b and c load combination a is for the maximum tensile strength requirement when you consider pull out resistance as a critical you have to go with the combination b and for the serviceability criteria combination c is given so for all these three combination different uh, factors are given so here in load combination a mass and backfill both you have to increase by 1.5 times earth pressure also you have to increase by 1.5 times and you do you have to do the analysis but in combination b you have to increase reinforced soil, soil mass all the mass you have to be uh, considered as it is and earth pressure you have to increase by 1.5 times means uh, your vertical load has been same but your earth pressure is more 1.5 times so then in this case you have to be have the pull out resistance is the critical in serviceability uh, considerations you have all the factors are one and you have to do the analysis so these are the three combinations are given and uh, one uh, designer has to check with all the combinations and for external stability sliding check overturning bearing capacity and overall stability we can call it deep seated stability checks to be given so this is the final analysis method and in this case you can have the uh, what all the considerations with any kind of reinforcement any kind of configurations so all checks bearing capacity direct sliding eccentricity strength connection pull out all the checks one by one one has to carry it out sliding at base when you have a soil at base is uh, like a weaker soil and you are you want to do something uh, for sliding you are not getting the uh, uh, required factor of safety then one you have to consider and you have to change the soil replacement or something or reinforcement to be provided and there are screenshot of that overturning this is the checks for that then bearing and tilt failure and that is the given this static seismic what is the factor bearing pressures and resistance and uh, this cdr is given it's more than one it should be more than one then deep seated uh, stability like overall stability when we do the all slip circles and we just check the factor of safety available for each slip circle passes through that this is uh, for three tier wall field if the higher walls is there you can model any kind of uh, height with the reinforcement also more than 100 layers like that in internal stability internal sliding rupture adherence serviceability all these things we need to check so we have to do the wage analysis sliding for upper portions and for stability for individual elements then check for rupture of the reinforcement then check for adherence we can call it pull out so pull out is also crucial at top for the reinforcement so this is the design uh, methods we have covered because uh, there are so many things and uh, i think this uh, within this uh, time constraint it is difficult to go step by step in detailed design but uh, if you go with the fw and asto uh, design modules you can have the detailed designs given in that in bs also but fw is uh, given step by step uh, solved example also so one can go through those things and uh, uh, you can have an idea for how to design the reinforced soil structures both the walls and slopes so now the case studies i'll uh, not take much time for these case studies because there are uh, five case studies we have considered considering the fascia here what we have explained so 
I will go one by one. So this is the one case studies in Telangana where the on one reservoir uh, we have to just uh, build uh, structures to give a support of the bowstring bridge from uh, reservoir bank to the pump house. And in that case, given structures have been adopted. IIT uh, Hyderabad from Professor Uma Sankar is involved for designing with us. And uh, we have given our entire uh, solutions uh, along with our products to them. So you can see this. This is the pump house. This is the one structures here. And this is the system given. This is the bow string girders has to be placed here. And this is the bank. And from bank, one wall, there is a bump, another wall, and then the support system here for this bowstring. So gabions, two layer of gabions, then uh, reinforcement here as per uh, design. This strap has been given considering the soil backfill and all these things. This is the structures you can see. So this is the bank. And this is the first tier. This is another tier. So during construction, you can see from the top, this is the second tier. This is the bottom tier. Like this. This is the completed one. So this is also protected with the Gibbon matrices. This is a Gibbon wall with the reinforcement behind. This is another second tier. And this particular bowstring bridge has been erected above that to have a pathway from here to here. So likewise, there are multiple locations which we have done. Uh, three has been already completed. Another two is, uh, I think, the work is going on. So this is the one uh, projects which we have completed. This is a Silong bypass. It's a 45 meter high slope with the reinforcement as a geo grid and uh, bottom to wall and then the uh, fascia of the wraparound uh, geo wraparound with the geo grid is provided this is the section four tier berm has been given small to wall at bottom so three products is used geo grid non one geotextile and gabion this is a completed slope from bottom to top. All these things are reinforcement. And then the vegetations will be there. Another is this particular uh, in Lonaula with the one private property. We have made the Gabian wall. So this is the one Gabian wall, and this is the another Gabian wall. And in between these two, there is a step at top. And then all these things, landscape, architectural things, aesthetically pleasant appearance has been made. So this is the section. You can see the how the step and two tier wall. So I'm showing only the uh, those case studies and those things uh, where uh, panels and blocks are not used, but we have uh, done so many projects and so many projects are going on with the reinforced uh, concrete uh, fascia. There's a completed wall. There's a wall from the top. Then this is the case study of Navi Mumbai International Airport, where we did the uh, river diversion and uh, entire uh, bank has been protected with cabin structures. Uh, with the geo grid and in between uh, river is flowing so this is uh, two locations we did one is at gadi river and one is at kulwe river so like here the advantage is rocky strata is there wherever we are not find the rock we just uh, remove the soft clay and then we have founded this gabion over the rock so this is the structures and for the protections for these KPNs at two, we have given some protection work, star protection. Here, connection is positive connection. 
it is a checks of global stability what we did maximum height of the wall is 11.5 you can see this photograph while execution is going on where the water is also flowing this is the ulwe river 100% coverage of the geo grid front is the kbl like this just water and what sometimes in uh, rainy season water will be up to this level only one kbl is left over this is another view of the same projects this is a completed wall this is the flowing water river diverted both the side is structures are there with the gabion rainforest soil structure another is same kind of river protection work with the gabion in gujarat so you can see the various stages at the constructions and this completed nearby completed wall this is the view from the another side like this so this is the wall finished after one year also we have visited and i think uh, more than one and a half years has already passed two monsoons it has seen now it's established one so this is for info soil wall and info soil slope with the various fascias i just try to cover in time whatever is there briefly i will just explain my company what we are doing and what we are so at tech firm india industries limited we have started our, our operation in 2003 with the aim to have a presence in uh, various application areas like rainfo soil wall uh, coastal protection ground improvement airports and urban roads and everywhere and uh, starting with two three products in 2003 we have all kind of geosynthetics in our kit right now after 20 years of our hard work and everything so we are the largest manufacturer in india we are not only supplying our material in india but we are exporting in so many countries and our products are well established accredited and having all the tes certificates with us you can see the the photographs here all the products we are manufacturing like woven geotextiles non woven geotextile geo grid pe this is polypropylene geo grid this polyester geo grid strap composite pvds geo cell Uh, then this drainage composite geo textile tubes gabions geo textile bags mattresses we are also manufacturing rockfall protection products like any kind of soil erosion or uh, landslide mitigation uh, is required we have uh, anchors we have a uh, solid nails and we have a uh, high tension mass everything is available for to cater the all kind of application areas so that is the strength of tech fab india we have a uh, factories available at six places like this we have a daman for certain products rakholi athal khadoli karajgam this is all in the uh, 170 kilometers from mumbai all five factories and this haridwar is in north india and uh, we are manufacturing our gabions and uh, the products for our rockfall mitigations areas in haridwar so this six factories are there for us all the factories are nabl accredited gailep accredited gailep is required for any any kind of uh, export uh, of the product if we are doing we need to have the gailep certifications so our our all the products are uh, certified our factories are iso certifications then uh, for c certifications to market in the uk we need bttj so our products are bttj certified skz is for the european uh, nations so we are having skz certificate tri usa is the testing laboratory for third party we did our major product tested at tri we have bba certifications for some products and some applications also we are member of itta we are having asto ntpp for usa market so all these certificates prove that we are a global player and we are supplying material across globe not only in india
you can see this the portfolio of TechFab India. All the product, all the major application areas we are covering, and our production capacity is huge. We can get cater any kind of requirement in India and abroad. Addition to that, uh, uh, being a BIS committee member, I know that what all our uh, standards are available for geosynthetic products. And the, whatever standards we are having for our product, we have applied for license and we are having the license of this. We have 12 license. Nobody is having 12 license for our product. Means any product you ask us, we will supply BIS certified products. So that is also one added advantage with our product. Thank you very much. Thank you all. And uh, I just uh, give uh, the local contact detail. Our Mr. Anwar Mohammed is ready, ready, ready available. Uh, we are also there for the helping you people out. And uh, with this, I will just uh, make a floor open for any discussions. Uh, that was a wonderful presentation from Mr. Saurabh Vyas and Mr. Premal Shah. Now we can start the panel discussion. I invite the moderator of the discussion, engineer Ajit Kumar GS, an eminent practicing engineer who has more than 30 years of experience in the construction field and deck positions like project director, project management unit, Rebuild Kerala Initiative LSDD, superintending engineer PMGSY, superintending engineer Nirvantapuram Corporation. And now he is a freelance engineering consultant. Now over to you, Ajit, sir. Thank you. We had a wonderful, wonderful presentation on relevant topics. We can now start panel discussion. I will introduce our panel member. First, I, uh, our Dr. Baran sir, former professor of College of Engineering, Trivandrum, presently working as vice principal RIVD Trivandrum. Uh, Dr. Baran sir was the managing director of Kerala State Care Corporation, Malapura, and also director of National Care Research and Management Institute, and uh, also balance of the R&D manager in Alias Industrial Company, Saudi Arabia. Uh, Balancer is the author of uh, more than 100 papers in, in journals, both in international and international journals. Now, uh, Balancer is the renowned consultant in geotechnical field. Secondly, Dr. J. M. Mann, Professor of College of Engineering, Trivandrum, is an eminent academician and uh, authors of more than a dozen purpose in both in national and international journals. Uh, J. M. Mann is a renowned consultant for various organizations and a technical committee member for Rebuild the Kerala Initiative, Government of Kerala. Thirdly, uh, Engineer Anwar Hussain. Anwar Hussain sir is a director of the high tech total solution providers and present chairman of ICA Trivandrum Center. Anwar sir was the former deputy chief engineer LSDD. Now he is a practicing civil engineer with an immense of experience in both soil improvement techniques and green construction methods. Dr. Asha Ma'am, Asha M. Nair Ma'am, is working as professor in Department of Civil Engineering, MSRIT, Bangalore. Asha Ma'am completed her PhD from Indian Institute of Science, Bangalore, and her MTech from REC Calicut, the present NIT. Dr. Asha Ma'am is a passionate researcher and consultant with expertise in the field of payment geotechnics. She has worked extensively on use of geosynthetics in permits and is very keen in experimentation and material characterization for infrastructure application. Finally, Professor G. Ramana, Assistant Professor of NID Warangal, is an eminent geotechnical engineer with expertise in rock mechanics and soil improvement techniques. He, was, uh, he has vast experience in the consultancy sector. Now, uh, let us start with uh, Dr. Balanzer. Sir, please tell us about the requirements of adoption of reinforced soil walls in engineering, engineering departments. And uh, what are the points to be 
the engineer has to be careful in the design and construction. Sir, please. Thank you, Ajit. He had a very good presentation from uh, Saudo. And I think uh, it's very clearly explained all the points. But in Kerala conditions right now, I think uh, we have to go for a reinforced retaining wall concept or adoption of that, such a new designs. Either slope or retaining, both the case. Because uh, once the angle of slope is more than 20 degree, we are thinking, uh, calling it as a slope, and otherwise it is a retaining wall. But still, there is some points we have to address is that uh, whether it is waterfront structure, quite naturally, if it is a uh, gabion wall, there will be easy dissipation of all water pressure will take place. But uh, there is a doubt among the engineers in Kerala that whether this is such a reinforced retain wall is uh, uh, applicable in, as a waterfront structure. So it is applicable and you have to take care of in the design, especially for water pressure. And there are companies in uh, India which is uh, approaching most of the engineering departments in Kerala as a consultant, I know. And they are procuring the material from somewhere else and then submitting it for, I mean, and giving the design as well as the supply of the material. So I think uh, we have to think of in the concept of uh, the make in India of government of India. And if I am not wrong, the recently Government of India, I think in April 2023, Government of India has uh, published a mandate, I mean, a gazette publication that, you know, all infrastructure projects, you have to use uh, Bureau of Indian Standards specified material, I mean, certified material. Am I right, Soro? Yes, sir. Yeah. Sir, correct. QCO, if we can call it the QCO, Quality Control Order. And Quality. BI uh, BIS has already issued that and from September onwards, if anybody will buy, trade, store any of non-BIS uh, product, then uh, they will take uh, any action against them. So BIS yes, products are mandatory now, sir. Because government of India is uh, proposing only for that one, make in India. The products right. which is made in India only has to be used. Correct. But there are agencies uh, in Kerala, those who are approaching our department, uh, rebuild Kerala, or even uh, because I am a consultant to KIFBI also. So I know most of the projects uh, which is coming up in KIFBI or in KRail or in IDRB, because it, all these departments, the Sports Kerala Foundation, in all these departments, I am a consultant, geotechnical consultant. And I have experienced that these people are coming and just uh, uh, purchasing material from outside which doesn't have such a certification and uh, what i feel is that for our department people uh, one more question will be necessarily addressed that is uh, uh, saurabhas has said about the backfill material criteria that is it should not have more than 15 percentage silt coming i mean uh, silk content or 75 micron passing should not be more than 70 uh, 15 percentage Plasticity index should be less than 6 and the angle of internal friction should be more than 30 degrees. But in Kerala, we have either if you come towards the Trivandrum side, we will have a red earth. And if you go to the midland, that is a, a, a Varkalat or Kollam, or as you go to north, say Kannur or uh, Malapuram region, you will have lateritic soil. So in this uh, lateral, because it is uh, varying from red earth to lateritic soil, and if you go to Western Ghat area, it slightly moves to forest loamy soil. So this is the general type of uh, soil profile we can see, moving from south to north and from north to, I mean, there's a uh, west to south, uh, east side. That you go to the east side, it is western guards. Western guards, it will be forest loamy. And if you come to, to Kollam or uh, the Malapuram, Kannur, it is lateritic soil. Trivandrum side, as you go to uh, further south, it is a red earth. So can I use a soil, the condition is slightly more than 15 percentage of uh, silk content and also PI is slightly higher, but angle of internal friction is around 33, 35. Yeah. So the condition yes, is PI yeah. and the, the, the 75 yes. micron content is slightly higher. Yes. Can so I use it? 
yeah yeah sir in that case what what we can do we can go for the slope rather than wall and in that slope we have a uh, one product that is a composite that we are using the non woven geotextile along with the reinforcement yarn knitted over that so this non woven geotextile will take care of the variation of the moisture so the uh, pore water pressures uh, will release very effectively because you have every layer there is a non woven geotextile available with the reinforcement and that uh, addition to that what we are doing with that kerala soil we are doing the some r and d work at iit palakkad and uh, we are we are going to have some results i think nearby uh, this year only uh, within 2 3 months and with that we can have an idea how much pore water pressure creation and uh, with this our uh, composite material i uh, we can take care of this pore water pressure or not so that is very good things i think you have asked we can uh, do this in a slope instead of the wall and definitely i think uh, up to pi 20 we can use that pi 20 and phi value is also we can go up to 28 27 if it is available so with the permission of the chair let me ask one more question because the viewers or the participant will have a doubt that uh, tech fab we will give a design concept, I mean, procedure or design methodology or uh, so say solution for the uh, department so quite naturally that will be available the main question is that during implementation time our engineers need support departmental engineers need support how it is to be laid or how if this comes like this what shall i do so will tech fab will provide a support for the uh, our departmental engineers during execution time yeah definitely sir we'll will do that we have uh, some experts supervisors are there and uh, will depute them for if uh, anybody wants for the entire durations that can be also possible if initial stage uh, if anybody wants then we can uh, give that and our technical person will also come and visit site at initial days along with our supervisors so that can be done uh, there is there won't be any issue we'll give the full support from our side okay over to ajit please go to the other uh, panelists Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, Jay, ma'am, please share your experience in consultancy in the construction of reinforced reinforced soil walls. Thank you, uh, Ajit. So, Mr. Saudo, have yes, a very a very detailed discussion about the materials, design, construction practices, etc. then uh, my experiences while i am checking the designs of uh, our rebuild kerala related to the retaining structures i am going to share their design checking experiences and the construction quality monitoring so during this process what i observed is this lsdd that is local government bodies are taking small scale projects okay so when they are executing these uh, small scale projects they are facing some issues in the site mainly they are doing the design because they have a very good design person and that person is doing the design based on material properties that is a uh, backfill material properties and same way uh, the reinforcement properties but what they are executing exactly in the site mm -hmm. is uh, most of the time it is different from what is uh, given in the design so the backfill material is entirely different yeah. and the material uh, reinforcements is also the same time they are facing they are executing all this work what balancer is told uh, with the local contractors and all this they they have no practice in constructing or implementing these projects Mm -hmm. so what they are doing is they are uh, fixing then overlapping all these things laying everything is not according to the proper uh, guidelines so all these things can affect totally the final construction quality so from tech fab side how, how can you support these things to small scale projects uh ma'am generally what we are doing we are giving our detailed method statement for any kind of applications we are submitting along with our design and uh, drawing 
we are preparing the detailed method statement <coughs> how to go uh, in execution step by step and uh, with that i think uh, whenever required because you told it's a small scale project sometimes the cost is also constrained and might be they can or uh, afford the supervision or not i don't know but if they can afford that definitely the supervision can be provided along with that so that person if once they will go and once they will just guide them for the initial work also then they will carry out this work in a similar manner and complete that thing so i think if uh, it's a detailed procedure is to be given frequency of test to be given what the test they have to carry out at site minimal test with that minimal test they can just compare that to whatever the specification is uh, there in designs that can be also uh, ensured at site with that testing and the supervisors are there that that they will guide them and they can uh, do the execution properly i think with these two three things uh, we can uh, just make some changes in that and also for uh, local person can assist because uh, we have uh, our team in kerala our people are there in kerala and for that they are expert people because they have also completed so many projects so they know technicality also and then other things also and the area also the um, all the geometry also so they can also come and guide for this uh, kind of things so uh, i think we are there to support there is no not an issue for us so in addition to that sir one more thing is that is your drainage composites yes sir what uh, that balancer also highlighted that that most of our retaining walls goes failure because of that poor drainage conditions hmm. uh, that is in uh, recently in vinad two retaining walls constructed one is with the geo grid full uh, quality control and stabilized all these things but uh, they provided uh, then uh, interlocking pavements on the top so finally that retaining wall collapsed during rainy season yeah on the same stretch uh, that is using only coir geotextiles and uh, bamboo geo grid they constructed a small retaining wall but it sustained there because uh, there is no restriction for drainage on that particular site mm -hmm. and my question is uh, this uh, drainage composites is it mm -hmm. applicable for even pavements also yes drainage composite uh, uh, we are uh, using uh, we already used in one of the kmc projects in northeast uh, mm -hmm. means uh, when they are using ctcb uh, cement treated base uh, material with that we have given for the drainage consideration horizontal uh, drainage composite for the pavement and it has worked now uh, we are doing the test at iit hyderabad with our drainage composite we have already completed that so in that case uh, with that normal pressure what is coming above and what is the requirement for the flow that we are getting the advantage with this drainage composite is because it won't clog after certain period of time because of the provision of the non woven geotextile but other kind of drainage when you are providing in the pavement once the water penetrates soil penetrates inside and that uh, clogging may happen and the 100% drainage capacity will not be ensure after certain period of time so this drainage composite is giving very good result only one thing i just wanted to tell here because the specification given in more than irc everywhere minimal specific uh, parameters they are giving and there are certain products available that can match one or two parameters and that can say okay, that product will perform now now for us what we are doing for our product we are finding the uh, factors that to be applied for the long term consideration if the my pavement uh, life is 20 20 years so within this 20 years i should get the whatever the my flow requirement and with that the my thickness or my flow requirement whatever is increased accordingly i have to provide the product if the proper product is there definitely it will serve the purpose so all this thing is required so then only it will uh, perform at site so one of my phd student is also doing this uh, uh, drainage composite in uh, pavements okay and he's also trying different type of drainage composites available in the market mm -hmm. uh, then with the different soil conditions in kerala that study is also in progress okay good Okay thank you sir
Thank you. Thank you, Mary. Madam, the supervisor, madam. Yeah. The next panel is Rajit. Okay, okay. Ah. Uh, sir, Anwar, sir, please share your thoughts on the advantages of Arrange for Yeah, thank you, Rajit. And uh, thank you, Mr. Saurivyas, for a wonderful presentation. Actually, this is a wonderful mother replacing all the erstwhile returning world mothers, as well as elimination of corruption. A lot of benefits are there in the construction of rain, reinforced soil wars, including reduced wastage of natural resources and reduced usage of energy intensive materials for construction, etc. Also, minimal excavation is, is only needed, only required for uh, foundation. Also, uh, the steel reinforcement, as we use in other concrete doors, this is also less or near to nil. Also, generation of waste like uh, uh, form work, uh, surplus waste aside after the construction, etc., will be reduced in this case. These reinforced soil walls have long life and low maintenance. Even it can be, it can withstand seismic activity. Normally, it is attempted to consolidate and stabilize the soil between the walls, layer by layer. In one case. We have seen a boss culvert which is about eight meters below the road level broken into two. This happened since the shear action on the culvert was, was not taken care of during construction. Engineers should pay utmost care in such minor matters during discussion as well as in construction stage. Otherwise, people will put blame on reinforced on uh, soil wars for no fault of the people doing the reinforced soil wars. Once again, thank you, Dr. Savirov, Mr. Savirov, for your wonderful presentation. Thank you, thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Ajit, sir, can you call the next panel member? I think Dr. Asham that can take off. Can can you hear sir? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, yes. Please, Asham, please. Asham, please. Yeah. Uh, actually, uh, thanks a lot. Actually, for this turtle smart solution for this initiative, wherein this knowledge sharing is happening between this uh, industry as well as with the consultants itself. And uh, in fact, uh, thank you, Saurav sir, for sharing your thoughts. And in fact, you have highlighted the entire guidelines and things. And uh, in fact, I can say that uh, this uh, retaining wall construction, in fact, has gained a lot of momentum in these days, especially because of the extensive use of these uh, waste materials also as a backfill materials. Because in fact, we can see that, especially with this uh, recycled aggregates, construction and demolition based, all these materials being a, uh, uh, like a slightly, we can say that with this uh, free draining characteristics. And in fact, I can say that this is also uh, provide an application wherein it can be extensively being used. And in fact, uh, hailing from Bangalore, I can say that in Bangalore, we can see that with lots of flyovers and, uh, you know, uh, uh, flyovers and things, we have found lots of applications of these materials. And in fact, in this context, I would like to ask actually Sauro sir, uh, concern, or I can say that the extent of application that has been in place, because for example, there is something like, uh, called as electrokinetic stabilization that has been uh, gaining momentum in these days. And in fact, I can say that the technology has not been in practice and wherein uh, 
for example, the mind tailing waste, or even as Balancer has told, uh, wherein the waste materials like uh, mind tailing waste can also be used as a backfill material by means of uh, using the uh, electrical charge being applied in order to uh, stabilize them along with the kind of uh, geosynthetic materials also. Is there some uh, research or some application that has been uh, you you people have done or been in process or something like that? Can you throw some light in this slide? Yeah, I think a uh, good question, ma'am. Uh, in, in this case, uh, what I can say, uh, there is a marginal fill concept is there. Okay. In uh, some standards, they have given the marginal fill. But in marginal fill, what has happened with certain relaxation in parameters they have given. If any kind of waste material, one uh, is willing to use that. But for the drainage consideration, height consideration, then the angle considerations, all are different. So one can use. And uh, for uh, this electromagnetic things, uh, people uh, have done. But uh, whenever they want to just get some idea for what is happening inside and all these things, they can consider certain kind of reinforcement. That reinforcement are very costlier reinforcement if you want to use uh, along with that particular things. And uh, marginal material also, I'm telling you, is used uh, in limited manner in uh, globally uh, some uh, countries. But in India, there is no concept because right now, uh, if we will ask for relaxation in five value or other things, considering the execution is happening at site, nobody is allowing in India because everybody is scared along with the consultant committee members who are forming these standards and everything. What they feel that once we have a quality of ex ex execution at site, then definitely we can relax all these parameters and go with uh, marginal fill and other available materials with that. So I think it is a long way to go, but I definitely mm -hmm. we have to think for this marginal material has to be used for reinforced soil structures. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you for providing clarification. Thank you, sir, for the excellent talk also. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Jit, uh, let me ask one more point. Yes, sir. With your permission. Several of uh, our departments, if they want a design help from TechFab, what are the details uh, they have to provide? Uh, design for sir reinforced soil structure yeah yeah retaining one okay sir for that uh, we need the um, uh, soil parameters reinforced field backfill what is available so that parameters of those then foundation fill what is the height what fascia they want to execute if they have a space available or not and uh, uh, definitely, if any cross section is available, we can have idea any uh, dead load above the wall. So we can consider that preliminary designing, considering the initial these things. If anything is needed, then we can uh, just ask further. But with this uh, initial data available, we can do some things and we can submit initial proposal. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Back to it. Thank you, thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Ramana, sir, please share your points as the as a practice uh, to the practicing engineers. Uh, what care should take in the design and execution of reinforced soil ports? OK, I think uh, thank you, Sauravoji. I think really it is a very uh, good presentation, especially not only for the theoretical engineers uh, as well as it's very excellent for Thank you, sir. And uh, especially, especially, and also extended my thanks to Balan sir and uh, Ajit Kumar sir and uh, Anwar Hussain sir also. So, and he, uh, I had a good experience in the field as well as now actually in theoretical concepts also. Especially this type of uh, reinforced earth also, this area and very essential, we cannot avoid also, but the uh, what I want to uh, stress in this particular junction for the especially you had a good experience and uh, in field itself. Uh, the main the quality control uh, with respect to the testing as well as execution both are very essential. So uh, techniques na so very problematic and you know very well uh, the 
if there is any particular small repair or maybe rectification at the latter stage is a very complicated task. So there control those particular drawbacks at the initial stage itself, especially for the elaborated testing with respect to the mechanical properties, maybe for example, creep, maybe for example, engine density limits. And the based on the functional performance of the any particular geo um, synthetic material, maybe geo membrane, geo grid, geo textile, geo strip, whatever it may be. So, with respect to the functional, those criteria, what actually standards has uh, uh, clearly explained, and uh, what minimum criteria has to be followed. Now, if we maintain, then there is no issue. Uh, and if you also some some particular cases for the internal stability and maybe for example external stability point of view so i think the entire internal stability depend upon the type retain uh, that is nothing but reinforcement fill and back fill and foundation fill also but here with respect to the uh, geosynthetic uh, material in a reinforced depth of all point of view role so and this is the main uh, uh, the interfacial frictional forces now it may be developed both the static and dynamic loads so what actually because uh, so what happened now so the execution partner what actually exactly pointed out by the balan sir and jay madam also the soil na they same uh, quantity and same uh, quality material throughout the stretch so that is one of the disadvantages and what mart guidelines has given for, for example so the ip the less than 2 micron is in between 0 to 10 percent is highly difficult task sometimes to get a, that much used quantity and uh, so therefore if we may concentrate more two areas of testing and site quality both geosynthetic material and and the reinforcement fill i think we can minimize the number of failures this is the main one of the actually my with respect to the education so i think saurav sir am i right yeah i think uh, you are right sometimes it is very difficult to get the same material for entire stretch so consistency of yes, the material is, is a and one more word. thing sir yeah. yes one more thing also sometimes and i think recently what we have uh, faced some problem because the stretch sometimes the maybe uh, reinforce the fill area otherwise sometimes there may be chance to it is difficult to maintain the sufficient length to mobilize the maybe that uh, to overcome that uh, so in such cases what we have to do sir that is actually my question no can you just uh, repeat your because i think some breaking of your voice is there so can you just repeat the question again i am not here fully in between uh, for example there is a one flyover okay if you want to connect the height is for example maybe for six seven meters so in between for example some stretch there is which is illiterranean Mm -hmm. So in such a criteria, na, so what methods has to be adapted? Can we place this particular? Either we have to remove the rock, or otherwise. No, 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 no. In that case, means what you are telling. If I am, I have understood your question properly. Okay, if in certain mm -hmm. stages you have encountered rock behind, and you don't have the sufficient length to accommodate the reinforcement. Sufficient length to mobilize this. Uh... Yes, exactly. Yeah, yeah, understand. So in that case, you can have a short wall kind of things. You can do some anchoring in the rock if the hard rock is there. You can connect the uh, reinforcement with the fascia. Okay, yeah, and and you can, but there is a different design methods. You can do the designing, and with that uh, space constraint can be overcome with that. Okay, if the rock is, for example, uh, not that much competent to uh, take out the tensile loads. For example, maybe we may use geo strip. So in such a cases, so if the rock is you know, then what what you have to that do strength mobilization. Uh, what we are we are doing if the soft rock is there weather rock is there you can remove easily so you can you can just have a space whatever the available space required that you can have by uh, dismantling that but whenever uh, you have uh, some good quality rock is there rqd is also good one what you have to do you just do the anchoring you have to carry out the pull out test for that anchors for that nails and then you have to derive the pullout capacity. If it is matching with the requirement of your tensile strength, whatever the reinforcement you are providing there, then you can consider that. And with that uh, designing of the spacing of the nails, 
and this reinforcement and everything has to be designed and then uh, you can just construct the wall okay yes thank you sir thank you very much for your uh, valuable uh, case studies actually which more uh, helpful for the academicians especially yeah. so uh, thank you very much sir thank you thank you thank you thank you once again once again thank you dr balan sir uh, dr jaya ma'am anwar hussain sir and dr asha ma'am and professor gv ramana sir uh, almost all the questions in the chat box uh, already answers are already given if at all there if there is any question uh, participants can raise questions almost all the questions were answered if there is no question means we can uh wait up the program please uh if there are no more questions we can conclude the session uh so the panel discussion and interactions were very informative now i would like to thank mr saurabh vyas and mr premal shah for a very informative presentation uh, i express my sincere gratitude uh, for total smart solutions ici hightech and aoek for organizing this program i also thank the participants for their presence and interactions thank you all thank you thank you thank you